What's good, Rooster fans? This is your host, Real Ed Oliver and Brandon Scott. Today we have special guests, No Breaks New. We're going to recap the game from yesterday and preview the games for this weekend as well and just talk about the Wizards season so far. Let's get to it. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Wizards your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you guys get podcasts. Today we got special guests, No Breaks New. Yes, he sir. has his own podcast and YouTube channel as well. Make sure you guys check him out. We're going to put his link down below in the description. His Twitter name is on the screen right now, man. How you feeling today? I feel great, man. Get to come on my favorite podcast, talk about my favorite team, with my favorite guys. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're going to start you all with um, what made you become a Wizards fan, who was your favorite Wizards player, and then we're going to get into the Wizards talk. All right. Um, my, but now he's, it's funny, now he's my brother. My, um, my cousin slash god brother took me and all my little cousins to see a Wizard game. Oh, man, this had to be 85, 86 or something. And I'm, I'm telling my age now. And um, that year we had Manute Bowl and Muggsy Bowles, the tallest player in the league and the shortest player in the league. And we all went and got autographs from all the players, except Manute Bowl. We couldn't find him. My cousin forged the signature, but don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. In that game, I just became a Bullets fan. Like, I didn't know any other teams. I wasn't a Jordan guy. I was just – I wasn't a basketball guy. I went to this game. We looked good. Everybody else was hyped. So I got hyped. And then my hometown team, and I just started following the following. Then I became a basketball junkie. And um, thanks to Isaiah Thomas and the Pistons, became a junkie. And uh, my favorite Wizard player of all time would probably be – it's probably Chris Webber, man. I wish he would have stayed longer. But, like, he was my favorite college player. And that was the first time I followed a college player into the pros. And then it came to my team. Now, don't, that doesn't usually happen. You know what I'm saying? We don't get Sha- Shaquille O'Neal. We don't get Alonzo Mourner from Georgetown. But we got Chris Webber. And I was super hyped. And, um, yeah. Chris Webber, see Webb. Oh man, yeah, Chris Webber was incredible. I hate, hate, hate that they left all, all the talent that we had, man. Chris Webber, Rashid Wallace, you know, uh, Rod Strickland, Jawan Howard, so much talent ben that Wallace. we had. Yeah, Ben Wallace. We just talked about Richard Hamilton being on the team too. I mean, he got a so ring, though. He got a ring. Yeah, yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna start off with um first question I got for you, man. Kyle Kuzma. It's definitely been a hot topic. Uh, been a solid player all year for the Wizards. Has definitely improved since he's gotten here for sure. But you know, we've had a lot of people go back and forth about um, trading him, and you know, it's better for them to move on for him from him for players to develop. Uh, what do you see happening with Kyle Kuzma this off season? And uh, what were your thoughts about what happened with him at the trade deadline, where they the front office came to him and uh, kind of let him decide about about being traded? With Kyle, um, I love Kyle Kuzma, first and foremost. I love him as a player. I love what he does off the court. I love the whole fashion thing. Uh, I'm a fan. Um, I think that he's a great second or third option. And for what we're since we're not paying him like we did Bradley Bill, I don't mind him staying because I do believe we'll draft. Maybe Denny will surpass him. Denny looks really good. Maybe Denny becomes the number one option. Or maybe we get, you know, Sar, you know, or however that, or another free agent or not somebody else in the draft. But I don't mind him staying and being the second or third best player on the team. This contract is affordable. It goes down every year. So in year four, when a contract expires, it's going to be like at 11 million. That That's a, a hell of a rate for your third or fourth best player. I don't mind him staying. I don't think he retards the growth of our players unless – we still let him <laughs> take the, all those threes, like get him under control, get him in the system. And I think he'd be a good addition. He's a good voice in the locker room. Everybody loves him. He, he's he's a fly player. Every, every team he is a fly guy on the team with a little bit of swag. And the Wizards don't have a lot of swag. I mean, so we need that. We need that. Um, so I would keep him. I would keep him. Um, 
I think this year he does stay because I think they had a chance to move him to Dallas. He declined. He declined for a reason, and they asked him for a reason. They like him here. They want him here. And um, the fans, I think, want him for the most part. And he wants to be here. So I will see, see how this draft goes and make a decision at the end of next year. I will keep him for this year. Brandon, what's your thoughts? I know you uh I know you want to ship Coos as fast as you can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm actually a big Coos fan, man. Like I said, when they came over from the Lakers, I will admit I wasn't a big fan of him when he was with the Lakers, man, because you know, little online stuff with him and Lonzo. I was like, man, he just scream immature, man. But um coming over to DC he came a, a complete player, man. You know, he became that scorer that we know he is. Like I, I agree with my man. Um, I love who he is on the court, off the court, the fashion, you know, he does a lot for the community off the court and especially for his hometown of Flint, Michigan. So I'm a big fan of him. My biggest issue, really my only issue with Kyle Kuzma was getting everybody involved. And he's starting to do that, you know, because he's been our unsung hero. I'm not a well, hero. <laughs> I mean, a leader. Um, Cause last year it should have been Bradley bill. And really Kyle Kuzma was our leader last year. So, and he's been great for the rebuild as far as leadership. My biggest thing was to rely on that jump shot. And, you know, he's got to find other ways to get the young guys going, man, get them involved because, Look, the key to the rebuild is development. We got to develop this young talent, man. But, you know, um, my biggest thing is I'm not so much ready to ship him out as opposed to I want us to get value from him at his highest peak of value. And that's my biggest thing is that if we're going to move him, get move him at his peak. And I believe that, you know, I don't know if he's going to get much more value. And that's why I'm advocating to move him, get assets. But, you know, looking at this draft coming up, you know, a lot of people don't like this draft. It's a highly developmental draft. And you're not going to find anybody in this draft going to start right away. Nobody. I mean, even Ron Holland is going to have to develop. So, I, you know, looking at point guard, you know, there's a whole other subject. But I think Jordan Poole can hold down point guard for a while. So I don't think point guard really is a big need right now, in my opinion. You're looking at power forward and looking at center. And even with center, you know, you got Rashawn Holmes in the player option. So he's going to take that money. Let's be real. Marvin Bagley on another year. And you got uh, Tristan Vucevic, who, in my opinion, can play the five or the four. So, I would prioritize the four, let a guy sit behind Kuz, a guy like Rousseau Shea, um, a guy like – look, Sar could play the four. They, matter of fact, a lot of scouts prefer Alexander Sar at the four as opposed to the three – or not the three, Lord, the five because of limitations as far as the offense. So, you know, draft a guy, let him develop, and then let Kuz around for another year. But I just want to make sure we get our value for him because, look, eventually we're going to have to move him. But, no, nah, I, I love Kuz, man. <laughs> it's just, you know, when now when it comes to talking ball, it's like – some people like, oh man, you're criticizing, you don't like him. No, nah, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm being 100 because I'm not doing anybody any favors if I don't keep it 100, man. So, um, I love Kuz as a player, man. Just get everybody else involved, and he does that. We got no problems. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Kuzma because he's, he's gotten better since he's gotten here. He's improved. Um, you know, when he decides to get to the rim, get downhill, that's when he's at his best. There's a lot of games where he is relying on his three point shot. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I don't think he really holds the guys back as much as people say. I mean, Denny has still played better with him. You know, you've seen Jared Butler step up. Other guys play well. Tristan Vucevic last night played well with Kyle Kuzma. So he's he's a guy that doesn't really get in the way of the young guys as much as people say. But um, yeah, as far as them allowing him to decline the trade at the time, maybe it wasn't a trade that the front office really liked. Maybe if they did get two first rounders. They would not have gave him a decision. They would have just made the trade and they would have shipped him off to Dallas. But they want to do right by them, which I understand that too. I just don't want them to, uh, of course, not get into a Bradley Bill situation where they actually give him a no trade clause. It's too late to do that. I don't want them to do something like that again, like how Tommy Shepard did. But Cruz, he's a darn good player. He's a good player. You got you to gotta pay somebody for the salary too. But if a, if a good deal comes along, then you got to make that move. I personally, you know, we'll see what happens in the offseason if they do trade him. Um, the trade deadline is coming up too, but like you brought up, new his he's on a good contract, he's on a good deal, so you don't have to rush to trade him right now. You can take your time with it, and if a deal you really, really you can you kind of wait on a deal that you really, really like, but at the same time, you don't want to have too high expectations. Like they were saying, oh, we want what they got for Pascal Siakam. You probably won't get what you got for pe- what they got for Pascal Siakam. But you can definitely get a first round pick for Kyle Kuzma. And I think that's that would be good value for him if you get a first round pick. So once again, I don't I don't mind him staying this year. If they keep him this year and in the year after, I'm fine with that too. As far as the rebuild, I think he's he can be a good 
veteran around the guys. We've seen Denny say good things about him. Rui, when Rui was here, he said good things about Kyle Kuzma, too. So I don't have a problem with him being here at all. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it, if they can get a first round pick, which I think they will, I think that would be a win win situation. So, uh, but yeah, Kuz, when he's locked in, dialed in, getting downhill, that's when he's at his best. And uh, he, he can rebound, too. He can pass. When he decides to pass, he's a good passer. So, I like him around fashion stuff. You know, we joke around about that and all the little flashy stuff, the pink sweater and stuff like that. You know, he's the reason why they had the fashion show. So, you know, we'll see what they decide to do with, with Kuz. But Kuz, Kuz has been a guy that's, that's certainly gotten better since he got here. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Oh, go ahead, Brandon. Oh, my bad, man. Uh, I guess we'll roll into the next. Uh, did you want to do that? Uh, yeah, I'll hop into the break here and then we'll we'll get on to the next part but uh before we do that today's episode is brought to you by robin hood did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement you can still have an ira robin hood has the only ira that gives you a three percent boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to robin hood gold but get this now through april 30th robin hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a three percent match that's right no cap on the three percent match robin hood gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their ira with a three percent match the offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risks, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Also, make sure you guys check on the Locked On Sports Network 24-7 stream. Are you watching sports, Fox Sports, or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube for the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I almost forgot. So, yeah, Bleacher Report, they came out with a trade. You know, I'll, I'll bring up Bleacher Report because, you know, me and Brandon have been on Bleacher Report. We're good partners with them. So I know everybody, every time everybody sees a Bleacher Report trade, they give it a hard time. So, you know, since we're a part of Bleacher Report, I'll be nice. But no breaks. I mean, you can state your opinion on it. So the, the other day they came up with a trade for Kyle Kuzma, a scenario, a mock trade. They had us trading Kyle Kuzma to the Thunder. For guard Josh Giddy and forward Usman Jane. So, what are your thoughts on that? You can give it a grade. Give it a grade? Yeah. Well, what's the lowest you can go? Is it F? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to give that trade. <laughs> no, man. That sounds like uh, Will Dawkins and crew. Want to give their want to help their buddies out. That 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 doesn't that doesn't sound like that sounds like when uh the Lakers got uh Paul Gasol for Mark Gasol or when they traded for Kwame. No, no, mm. no, 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 no. Who that Destiny's Child? No, 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 no. That's that's ridiculous. I'm, give up Kuz for a number one in ne- year after next draft. Next year is our tank year. Trade Kuz two Kuz at the deadline and let's tank next year. That's where the talent is. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. You know, Cooper Fly, you got a couple guys. I saw the McDonald's on American game last night. A lot of guys I liked in there. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one for sure. And then, uh, Brandon, I know you probably uh, probably feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a definite no on that one, man. I mean, we got there's too much draft in the 25 and 26 drafts, man. Uh, I mean, let Koo sit for another year, man, and then we'll let the, whoever's behind him, let him develop. So yeah, that's a, that's easy. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's it's got to be picks. It's got to be picks. Got to yeah. be picks, especially. And Josh Giddy's a fine player, but you know, with all the allegations and stuff going on, we won't get into that. But um, I rather get some picks rather than getting Josh Giddy. I rather get a player and picks. Now, who's it gonna play over? You put all this draft yeah, capital into Malau. You got Jordan Poole on four more years. Where are you gonna play? Man, get out of here. Shout out to Bleacher Report. No, hey, shout out to Bleacher Report, man. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, yeah, man, absolutely. So mm-hmm. I guess we'll move into head coach, man. Um, look, Wesley Sell Jr. got 
promoted, <laughs> even though Wayne ain't, ain't nobody seen him in, in a minute. Um, so this team has really responded to interim head coach Brian Keith. Now, in my opinion, I think that he at least has earned an interview. Obviously, they're going to reach out, do their due diligence, and hire people. Uh, the three main names, you know, Mike Budenholzer, uh, Juwan Howard, who former Bullet, uh, former University of Michigan coach, and Sam Cassell. So um, how much of a percentage do you see that Brian Keith can retain the head coach position? And if you can't, um, who's your biggest candidate for head coach next year for the Wizards? Honestly, I think Keith has about a 30% chance, um, which I think is high. I don't, I'm not saying that as in a low percentage. When you think of all the other options um, and considering what's happened that's transpired this season, because he came up under um, – he was under San Antonio, correct? Wasn't he part of uh, – Ah, the actually, yeah, I believe it was San Antonio. Yeah, Brian Keith. Yeah. He was with uh, the Thunder, of course, with Dawkins and um, Winger, and then he was with the Lakers. Okay. Um, I know Kevin Durant gives him a lot of credit, and um, he actually made the Lakers into a good defensive team while he was there too. But um, you might be right. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look up the wiki, Wikipedia on him real quick. That might have been what I was thinking. Uh, I'm trying to think of the connection. So with OKC, that that connection does make sense. Yeah, he's with OKC, and then he's with the Knicks, and then the Lakers. He went back. He went back. He went back to OKC, and then he's with the Nets. With when uh, Kevin Durant was with the Nets. That's yeah, but uh. But you're right though, because um, it says that he he wasn't a coach though, but he was a a video coordinator under Greg Popovich in San Antonio. So, okay, yeah, he he was he was in the building, but he wasn't coaching yet. So, <laughs> hey, that, that's our uh, what's old boy name? Eric Spolster started off. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. video videography. But, um, I don't dislike Keith. Um, I actually do like um, what I've seen from the team as of late. Um, but I I want someone. My gut used to always go to that LeBron James new podcast where he said um, uh, the winning teams pick contributors over potential. And I'm at a point now with the Wizards, like, let's let's do something for real this time. I've been a Wizard fan for 40 years. Can we do something that really matters this time? So I want a coach that's proven some things. I want a coach that's established. I don't want to take a fly on anybody. I don't want any more projects in the draft. Uh, Shout out to Bilal. But I don't want any more projects. I want somebody. I want Cam Whitmore. You know, I want somebody who can contribute that I know can contribute. And I want a coach that I know can control the locker room. I don't need the guys uh, with Davies Bertans. Thank God he gone. Talking about the inmates were running the asylum, whatever he said. No, I don't want that. I want the head. I want, I want players. I want Jordan Poole so scared that if he doesn't make the right pass, that he's going to get bent to get cut or get something. I want. Uh, Kyle Kuzma afraid to shoot that extra three because he might not start next game. I need an enforcer in that locker room. I know Coach, Coach Bud is tough. I actually met Jawan Howard a couple of times. Shout out to Jawan. Um, I don't know him well, but I met him a couple of times. Hung out with him in, in our DC club days back in the, you know. But um, I think he's a good disciplinary. He ain't taking no crap. Um, I want to Sam Cassell before we got uh, what's uh uh, Russell Westbrook's coach from OKC to came. Oh, uh, Scotty Brooks. I wanted him before Scotty Brooks. Oh, yeah, so I don't know how Cassell is nowadays, but I wanted him back then. And uh, I'm gonna throw this out there. I I want I, I wouldn't mind Becky Hammond. I said it. I'm with you, man. Um, I think the biggest key is what you said is that this player in it. I've been saying that all year. You need a guy who's gonna come in and hold these guys accountable, man. Weston Cell Jr. was just too monotone. You, you got to hold guys to a standard because you don't see a lot of these shenanigans on the court, you know. And, you know, look, Sean Poole has – he's taken his L's, he's worked his butt off, and he's really playing really high-level basketball right now. But you got to argue if you – you know, think about it. If you had a disciplinary coach, do you have these shenanigans on the court early in the year? No. I mean, and like I said, Brian Keith, you know, definitely has done a good job, you know, getting his team to react. They're definitely playing better on defense, even though they're not a you know lockdown team by any measure. But you have seen the effort there. So, I mean, what do you think? E? I mean, if you had to choose between Bud and um, Juwan Howard, who are you rolling with, man? Oh, definitely Budenholzer. I mean, Juwan. I like Juwan. You know, he he smacks somebody, so he shows the intensity in the fight for sure. Uh, but Juwan, you know, the last couple of years, looking at what happened with him, he finished the season eight and twenty four. Now, when he first started out. You know, he did win Big Ten player, uh, Coach of the Year, and uh, I want to say he won, like, Coach of the Year in the whole NCAA. 
I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, he was Big Ten Coach of the Year. They went 23 and five. Then they went 19 and 15, 18 and 16. And then the last season, they ended at eight and 24. He got fired. So then, in well, maybe he would he would be better in the NBA. Maybe he's better suited to coach NBA guys. We'll see. But I really like that fire um, for sure. Somebody who, who's fired up on the bench, fired up in the huddle. I think you would get that from Juwan for sure. But those last couple of years kind of are questionable to me. Um, Budenholzer, I don't think he shouldn't have got fired. I mean, with Giannis, you know, he's 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 showed in the last couple of years, a couple of coaches got fired. The guy they did, they just fired. Doc Rivers has kind of been iffy since he's gotten there. And um, but Budenholzer, I mean, he's shown every team he's with, and with the Hawks too. The Hawks didn't have the best roster. You know, they didn't really have a superstar. They had Jeff T, got Horford, Kyle Court. They had a bunch of guys that just fit well. The chemistry was good, and they were able to play off, off of each other, like Damari Carroll, guys like that. Um, and they always got, you know, to the Eastern Conference Finals or to the second round. Like, they always overachieve. So, Buda Holder comes in, he gets guys to overachieve, and he doesn't need – you don't have to have a superstar on the team for them for him for him to get the team to the playoffs. So, I think he's got a good resume. Kenny Atkins is a guy that a lot of people don't really talk about much. I thought he was wrongly fired when he was with the Nets. Kevin Durant and Kyrie, they wanted Steve Nash there. They fired Kenny Atkinson. They just made the playoffs with Kenny Atkinson with the Nets. You know, and that team didn't have a bunch of superstars. They had, like, D'Angelo Russell and um, a couple guys on that team that were solid players. But, you know, De- De- I like D'Angelo Russell. He was cooking uh, He was cooking here in D.C. the other day, too. And he's gotten better this year. But that's a guy that I like. Um, and there are some guys, but I feel like the Wizards with the Sam Cassell, you brought up Sam, you guys brought up Sam Cassell. That's who we should have fired the first. I mean, that's who we should have hired the first time. But of course, they went with, you know, here they like to reward, you know, players' sons and, you know, people we know and whoever was in the organization and stuff like that. You know, like a, there's a lot of nepotism in the organization, which I get it. Uh, they're not the only team that does it, but Sam Cassell, he would have made more sense. And, Bradley Bill was here at the time. Why not hire the guy that Bradley Bill? If you're if you're gonna give Bradley Bill the keys to the city and no trade calls and everything, you should have just gave him the coach that he wanted, and they didn't even do that right, you know. So, um, Sam right now he's an assistant coach with Doc Rivers at this right now with the Bucks. So he's available. Kenny Atkins is at the, at the top of my list of, in Boone Holzer. Those are my two top guys right now. And I was thumbed down in uh, Dinwiddie because he was on that team. He was on the team, yeah, oh, Dinwiddie, man. He's, <laughs> oh, my gosh, one of the worst players I've ever watched in my life with the Wizards, man. It was hard to watch him. Yeah. Yeah, what's up, so, man? That's a, that's probably the best firing I've ever seen in my life, man. I mean, I I hope I get fired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, promote <promoter>, remember? <laughs> right, promote. It's the name. I, I, I was worried about that. They, they hired this guy. What if he's bad? Mm-hmm. He let his, his father, rest in peace, Coach for a long time and we was terrible. So yeah, I remember yeah. that too. Yeah, I think that discipline is definitely the, the next order of business is in Cap One, man. We need somebody who's gonna hold a standard, man. So uh we, we're gonna um hit you with a couple more questions, but before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers Amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as a Fire TV stick. You can plug in your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, oh yeah, or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free, y'all. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking channels, or videos as well. Check out the Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out the Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, all you have to do is visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. And tonight's episode is also brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. And there are three great options, the Rogue, the Pathfinder, and the Armada. I'm very biased. I like the Pathfinder, so we're going to roll with that today. The 2024 Nissan Pathfinder has room up to eight in expansive cargo capacity and advanced available 4x4 capability. With 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing, when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to Answer so 
Take the Nissan Rogue, the Pathfinder, or the Nissan Amada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right. Uh, did, you, did you want to start? E, you want me to go? Yeah, let me uh, let me ask my question. Of course, we got to talk about the man of the hour, Jonathan Johnny Davis, you know, because <laughs> he may not be on the roster next year. He may not be in the NBA next year. You know, we'll see. Uh, what are your thoughts about And I'll, I'll group Tristan into the, into the question, too, just, I guess, talking about some of our young guys. Uh, what are your thoughts about Tristan so far in the last couple games you've seen? And, and um you know, I guess your thoughts on Bilal is his rookie year, and uh, what do you what do you think about Johnny Davis? And uh, do you think Johnny Davis has any any um, a chance to be successful in, in this league? Well, I'll give you the bad news first. <laughs> <laughs> um, Johnny, I was rooting for you. You the time banks zone. I was rooting for you. Uh. <laughs> I have seen Johnny come on strong at the end of seasons. You know, I've seen him the end of, end of last season come out and go, okay, Johnny. I saw him in the summer league and I saw potential. I'm like, you know what? He had a rough start. He seems to have figured it out. And then something weird happened this year where they just weren't playing him. And then he was getting in. He was missing. He was shooting air balls. I'm like, what just happened? Like, you turned the corner. I saw you. Um, and then they had a couple flashes. I think at the very least, at the very least, to be as nice to him as possible, we're not developing him, we're not developing him properly. He's not thriving in our system. He hasn't learned the level of consistency with us. And I think respectfully, we should let him go and do that somewhere else where he can be the best that he can be. Because I'm, I'm rooting for him. But I don't think it's going to happen here. I don't want it to happen here. Um. Bilal, of course, I wanted Cam Whitmore. Um, I couldn't believe that Cam. I didn't think Cam Whitmore was going to be available, so I was kind of like, "Okay, who, who can we get?" When I saw that everybody had passed on him and he was there, I, I was texting my buddies like, "We got him! We got him! We got him!" And they said, "Bilal, I'm like Bilal, cool to who? The dude to play with Wimby? You got to be." And I immediately went to my YouTube. Bilal Kulabali highlights. And I was like, I mean, he's cool, but he seems like a raw project. And again, like LeBron said, the good teams draft uh, contributors, not potential. He did impress me. All he had to do was be a halfway decent defender, and I would have accepted Bilal because of what I knew of him. But he has a decent shot. He could pass. He, um, he, he was a better defender than I imagined. I believe he could defend three, four positions, and um, I think he's about 6'8 now. So he was, I think, 6'6 six, six when we drafted him or something. He's about 6'8, so I like that. Um, I like his hunger. I like that um, he has a feel for the game, but he disappears. There are just times where he's just, you can't tell he's on the court. He'll, he'll be two for five on the field. He was like He played 29 minutes. Like He played a lot of minutes compared to other rookies. He came off the bench most of the year, but he was logging long minutes. And other rookies who put up his minutes, they were just outperforming them, namely Cam Whitmore. Um, so I am hopeful that he can do a day. Meaning year two, year three, I think we'll I think we'll be very pleased with him. I do believe that. Um I don't I'm not yet, but um I would give him like a C plus. Um I would give Johnny, I wouldn't give Johnny, I'd give Johnny incomplete because it's not fair to judge Johnny. Um Tristan Vucevic, I loved him the minute we drafted him. I loved him all the summer league games. Um, I wanted him here all season. I resented the fact that we didn't have a center at backing up Gafford for half the year um, when we could have had him here. I was, you know, I, I was just, I couldn't understand it. Vucevic has a feel for the game. That man can pass. He threw some sweet passes. That little spin move he did, um, his uh, the first breakout game. I can't uh, crowd against uh, Jay Crowder. That little spin move and spin back and spin. And he has a feel for the game that I believe he can be a contributor right now. Maybe a starter, maybe a best player, the four or the five. He's a player. And um, I am very happy with him. He is, 
I think you guys said it, but he's the best second round pick after three, four games that I think we've had since George Pearson. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. George. Yes. Uh uh-huh. yeah, George Mirasan, Manu Bowl. Uh somebody brought up Andre Blacks last night. He was a solid second round pick. But other than that, yeah, I mean it's been guys like Yannick Zosa, Isu Santa, uh Aaron White, guys that you know we don't even see play step foot on the court for one minute or even get off the plane and come here. He already, you know, straight off the plane, uh helped us beat the Bucks against Giannis, played well against Anthony Davis and LeBron, uh played well against Brooke Lopez. Like Tristan, Tristan's playing good ball and I myself, just like you brought up Cam Whitmore, I was upset. You know, we didn't get Gigi Jackson, and Gigi Jackson's played really, really well. But looking at Tristan players, like okay, I'm not, I'm not as upset that we didn't take Gigi Jackson. Cam Whitmore, me and Brandon, of course, just like you watching the draft. Cam Whitmore was not supposed to really get past pick five. That's the all the mock drafts had him at five. It was like between him and the Thompson twins, like right there, right in that same range. And then he dropped, he kept dropping, and he dropped to what pick 20, which is insane to me. And now he's making a lot of he's making a lot of people uh wrong about that. But I, I'm I'm happy with the blog pick. I think you brought up a good point where there are times where he will disappear, but that's just a part of him being so raw. His offensive game, the shot, the the handle, dribbles the ball a little too high, he'll lose his handle. Um, the shot will change a little bit. It's not his shot won't change like Johnny Davis's shot, but it will change from time to time. So He's getting more confident in his three-pointer. He's actually shooting the three-ball better than what I thought. In the summer league, he really struggled. And then overseas with Wimby, he wasn't known as a three-point shooter. So he shot the ball better. But the athleticism shows. I think that's a great part of his game. He's super athletic. Defensively, he'll block. He'll glass people. He'll block the shot off the backboard. He'll, he'll rebound well. I think he's a solid passer. So you see the potential in this game. It's just going to take some time. It's going to take a lot longer. Just a little bit longer than Ken Whitmore, obviously. Weight room, weight room, weight room, pick up the weights, stay in the weight room all summer. All summer, stay in the weight room, work on the ball handling, work on the shot. And I think year two, year three, year four, we'll kind of see kind of like how Denny, it, was, it, took, it, took, it took Denny really five years to get to where he's at right now. But I think Bilal might, might get to, he might get there a little bit faster than Denny. That's one thing I will say about Bilal. Um, but yeah, all, all the points about Cam Whitmore, I, I can't disagree with you about that for sure, but I, I think they got a talented player in Bilal. I think they got some talent there. They just, they just got to work with them. I think they have. I think we have the right front office and right system to get him right. As far as Johnny, I think they've already given up on him. I think they 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 already gave up on him before the season even started because they didn't want to play him. You know, they put him in the G League. They didn't want to play him. They didn't want to give him any playing time. Like they had. Um, who was getting some? Somebody else was getting more playing time than him, and it was like uh, it was like other guys. Like uh, I can't remember, but obviously they didn't want to play Johnny. They didn't draft him. You said who? Uh Shamit. Yeah, Shamat, and then some of the Gila guys came up. Jared Butler was getting more playing time than him, and I can't I can't act like Jared Butler didn't earn it. Jared Butler earned his minutes. You know, he came in. He's he's he surpassed Johnny. Champagne, Champagne. He surpassed Johnny. Vucevic has already passed Johnny already. So. You know, sometimes you got to look at Johnny, too. Like, you just you just got to play better. Other guys are Jules Bernard. Some of the G-leaguers that come in are already played better than him. So, you know, we can't hold his hand all the time and make excuses for him. But at the same time, like you brought up, the front office hasn't helped him out either. And the, the previous regime with Tommy, they didn't help him out much either, changing his shot, breaking his shot down. So it's not all Johnny's fault, but some of it is just – Maybe he just wasn't the right pick. And then, you know, we talk about Cam Whitmore, Jalen. I know I'm going on a tangent. Jalen Williams was behind him. Jalen Duran was behind him. Um, there's like four or five guys you can look at now where it's like, if we pick them instead of Johnny, then, you know, maybe we're in a better position than we are right right now. So, um, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Johnny. And like, like you guys brought up, it, it, it may not be here. It may be elsewhere. It may be overseas. But, you know, I just don't think it's going to work out here in D.C. Aiden, they kicked that man out the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. He, he might be playing with Kendrick Nunn, you know, in a couple years. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> Shout uh, out to <laughs> <laughs> So, um, before we roll, man, I, I, I got, a, got a question for you real quick, man, because I know you're a longtime Wizards and Bullets fan. All right, what was the biggest mistake, in your opinion, not re-signing Larry Hughes or re-signing um, Otto Porter Jr., what do you think? Out of those two? I would go. 
I would go with the um, I would go with Larry Hughes. I, yeah. I like what he I like what yeah. he did here. Um, but the biggest mistake ever was trading Chris Webber for Mitch Richmond. Yeah, that's the biggest me. mistake in the history of the franchise. I defy anybody to name one better, bigger. Mm-hmm. Mitch Richmond was at the end of his career. He came here, averaged mm-hmm. like sixteen points, and Chris Webber went and battled Shaq for. Western Conference Finals dominance. That was the worst trade I've ever. I I I don't know if I've seen a worse trade in sports. Mm. I thought you were gonna say Randy Ford and the Mike Miller trade. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad one too, man. I mean, if you look at that Larry Hughes, man. I mean, can you imagine that backcourt of Larry Hughes and Gilbert Arenas because they played previously together, go in Golden State before you know, the coin flip and give them over here, man. But the lineup with those two in the backcourt. With Antoine Jameson, with Cron Buller, nah, come on. <laughs> I mean, the biggest thing with that team is also center, man. I, I've never been a big Brendan Hayward guy. I mean, he just he did his job, but he just never was that dominant guy that we needed with those teams, man. But I always wanted Eton to start. I'm like, start Eton. Yes, yes. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Where is Ben Wallace? <laughs> That's how I feel. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, I'm goody. Mm, all right, but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, you can give your thoughts on on, on Johnny too, man. And what did you think? Oh, I, know, I mean, we already know how you feel. Though. <laughs> yeah, y'all know how I feel. I mean, you know, I, I hold. I hope that he can figure it out. I don't want to see anybody struggle, man. I want to see any young player succeed, man. Um, but I do feel like we can judge him. I mean, if we can judge John Vesley, we can definitely judge Johnny Davis, man. Because John Vesley is a whole another conversation. But I mean, Johnny, it's it's who do you blame? I mean, you can. There's so many people to blame. I mean, Tommy, yeah, because. Tommy didn't really do his due diligence as far as scouting. Um, when they try to change his position, the point guard, he's not a point guard. He's not even a three-point shooter. Now, he, he shot it at Wisconsin, but he only had two attempts a game. I mean, he's a mid-range guy who offensively, look, he's not going to blow past anybody. So he's got to rely on finesse and footwork. So if you look at Johnny, it's a lot of footwork, man, especially when he's driving in the lane. He's using a lot of footwork and, and a lot of counters, man, to try to score. So it's just – you know, his shot, let's be real, his shot is ugly. I mean, it's changed about seven times, and it's just, it's, it's tough to see who you blame. But it's a performance-driven league, man. You know, you got to perform with giving the minutes. And now he's starting to get 15, 20 minutes. You know, he's got to perform, man, because um, when you see Jules Bernard and you see Justin Champagne come in here and instantly provide better minutes, and you can tell there's just, they're they're better than him. And I hate to say that, but if you look at his skill set, Jules Bernard and Justin Champagne are just better than him. And you're looking at it, it's like, man, we spent our 10th overall pick on this guy. It's just, you got to admit it's a missed pick. Now, Johnny, I think the, the work ethic, he's going to be all right. He's going to find, you know, whether it's the NBA, whether it's overseas, you know, the people, look, basketball is basketball. I mean, I get it. The NBA is the highest level, man, but he's going to continue his basketball career, man. He's going to be, you know, look, people forget the Starbury, man. He's like Jordan over in China. I'm just saying that you can go somewhere else and play quality basketball, man. So he's going to have a future in basketball, whether it's in the NBA, you know, whether it's G League. But um, looking at Bilal. Yeah, I was with y'all, man. The draft night, I was like, man, we about to get Cam with more. And it's kind of like one of those situations with the commanders where you're waiting on Christian Gonzalez. Like, nope, man, you're four. It's like, come on, man. Come on, man. Stop messing with me. Like, he's very, very raw. And we knew coming in that offensively, he was going to be very, very raw. So I was like very impressed with what I've seen because I expected a lot less, as, to be honest with you. Uh, defensively, he, he's on the money. I mean, he's got the dog mentality. We need more dogs in D.C. He's a dog. You know, he's he's dying for loose balls. I mean, he's blocking, you know, blocking people, steals. He's already got it defensively. If he could figure it out offensively, man, it's like Denny. Denny would came in as a defensive guy. You know, his offense had to be evolved over time. And I know it's always that Tyrese Halliburton versus Denny, you know, and then we always had the argument like, would Tyrese Halliburton still have ended up being the same player in D.C., knowing our track record when it comes to development? I'm going to say no. You know, Denny was probably the best pick of the situation because of where we are as an organization, which is, you know, we need to develop better. We need to scout better. We need, you know, we need to put the right pieces in place to actually utilize young talent because we have it. So, but a lot of things will be all right, man. He's got the drive, the athleticism. He impressed me when you try to go up and uh, I forget who it was, man, but you try to go up and posterize somebody, man. And uh, he came down and he hurt, he hurt his wrist. But look, he got some dog in him and we need more dogs. So, uh, Tristan Vucevic, man, I'm going to say this. He he is Jonas Valanciunas. 2.0 when he i'm telling you right when he can figure out the defense because he's seven footer so you give him that dog mentality and work on that defense he can already spread the floor uh, he's money as far as scoring man so if you can figure it 
him out and get him the ball defensively, Jonas Valachunas is a 2.0. I mean, because he's just he's already comfortable in the NBA. He came in and he's already providing valuable minutes, man. So I think the future's bright. I really do. I think that we have a nice young foundation here. You can add, you can definitely consider Jordan Poole part of the young foundation. He's only 24 years old. I mean, he hasn't hit his peak yet. And here's the big thing with Jordan Poole, because a lot of people get on me about it. It's like, ah, you know. Here's the thing about Jordan Poole. He went through so much as a young player that a lot of young players will fold. This dude got booed. This man got ridiculed in every sports media platform in the country went after him. Shaq and the fool went after him. I mean, <laughs> everybody went after him. And you know what he did? He put his head down. He worked. He worked his tail off. Even when he went to six man, he took it. He said, all right, cool. He, sh and he showed what he can do in that position. Now as a point guard, you know, the mental part of me is what impressed me more about Jordan Poole than his skill set. Because as a player, he's money. You know, when he's locked in, he is a nice young piece, man, that we can definitely build with, man. But the mentality. To take L's in this league, in this society, in social media, to go through what he went through and still turn around and play the way he's playing, he's got it, in my opinion. He's got that. So, yeah, the future's bright, D.C., man. Very, very bright. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I definitely agree on Jordan Poole. Um, he's, he's, he's definitely improved so much after switching to point guard and just coming off the bench. But now he's been starting. He, he's been playing that point guard full-time role. Um, a lot of stuff we didn't get to. We got to get you back on for sure. I'm um, talking about Jordan Poole because uh, he definitely had a roller coaster season for sure. But no breaks new. Tell me where uh, people can find you, man, and what you got going on or coming up on your own show. Uh, it's no breaks new. Um, at no breaks new on uh, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Christian Mingle. I'm everywhere. No breaks new. Um, my podcast is a pod named Kickback. We do the biggest stories of the week in pop culture, music, sports, politics, relationships. And then we have think pieces. No, no topics this week. I want to talk to you about financial literacy. I want to talk to you about dating polyamorously. Just whatever, you know, whatever it is. And um, I, it's my pleasure to be here. I do have one quick question for y'all. Mm -hmm. I think the draft is only a success if we get SAR. Or Zachary Cyrus, those two. <laughs> I like John Holland, but he's a Cam Whitmore light, and we, I, I hate the fact that the Wizards keep drafting wings. We got more wings than Wingstop, man. We had uh, Otto Porter, uh, 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 Troy Brown, Denny Rui, Bilal. Can we, no more wings. Get me a big man, and we don't need a point guard because I agree with you. Jordan Poole is the point guard of the future. Real quick, is, is Saw the one? Is it Saw or how do you say his name? Zachary. Oh, uh, I had a I had to practice for like two days, man. It's uh, Risache. It's French. Yeah, it's, it's, those it's, are our two guys. We should have an, one of the first or second pick. We take whoever's there. Saw first, because I think Saw. Kuz, Denny, Bilal, and Poole, those three guys, Saar, Denny, and, po and Bilal switching defensively? I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, I'm rolling Saar. Saar's my guy. If he's not there, we saw Shea, man, because he played a four. And that's why I said let him sit behind Kuz for a year. You really uh, pick up the speed of the NBA. And he, I mean, he's look, look at tape of him, man. He can score. You know, he's definitely got the, the range for the NBA. It's just adding the body to it because he's kind of a tweener, man. But, you know, look, let him sit behind Kuz because, look, Sark played a four. And a lot of people saying that he's best served at the four because they compare him to Jaren um, Jackson, man. So, yeah. I mean, and that's not a bad comparison, man. So, yeah, I'm definitely rolling Sark, man, or uh, Resar Shea because, man, that name, I was calling Resarcher for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm starting to like Stephon Castle. I know he can't shoot, but he's an athlete. And uh, I think they need more athletes. I think they need more explosiveness and more toughness on the roster. Some guys that play with a chip on their shoulder and that are very physical. And uh, Stephon Castle brings that that energy and that explosiveness. But Saar would be a great pick. I mean, I'm looking at a mark drive right now. Saar is going number one to the Raptors. You know, a lot can change uh, since, since from now till then. Um, but yeah, no, uh, sorry, sorry, would be a great pick because we need a big bad, like we need a versatile big that can that can uh stretch the floor and and um, you know, bang in the paint a little bit. I think Sar can do that for sure. 
But we we need a center bad. But I don't want to just draft for need. We just need talent. So best player available. But yeah, any any Lassar is good to me. Castle, I would like Castle, and um, you know I, I think um, the guy you're talking about with the last name with the Z, I would probably butcher his name too. Or uh, or Rosace. I think he's a solid a solid player too. So this draft, I mean, they they just said a lot of a lot of a lot of scouts are saying this is the worst draft ever. And of course, you know we would have the top pick during that. But you never know. This there could be some diamonds in the rough. There could be there could be some good players in this draft. The other team that drafted Kwame Brown. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, thanks for having me on, fellas. I'll, I'll yes, sir. Do you a favor. We, we can bring Ed out of out of retirement and come on. And we're gonna do yes, something. Sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for. Listen to Making Nothing, which is your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you guys get podcasts. Make sure you guys subscribe. Hit the notification bell as well. Make sure you guys subscribe to No Breeze New on YouTube and his podcast as well. Hell to the Wizards. Peace.